when we had an agent, we got another opportunity to uh, submit to The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, uh, and we did, and we met with Carson. Uh, they said, you have to go to a personal interview, and we said, well, what does he ask? And they said, we don't know, but some people don't make it, you know. So we were like, well, why didn't somebody make it? And somebody said, well, there's a guy who was too fat. <laughs> like, I better not look too fat. And we went in and talked to him for about five minutes. And it was like being on the show. You just kind of got interviewed and he said, okay. And then we used to, we worked there for a year and a half. We didn't talk much. He made jokes about us being young and about, you know, um, just, you know, what we, what we like on the show. And uh, it was very, very brief. I, mean, I worked there for a year and a half and, and, uh, I even did an interview on a documentary about him, but the interview lasted longer than my time with him, actually. I only was there, you know, in his presence for about 30 minutes, I would say. I never met half the other writers. I, never, I barely, barely met Johnny. I never met Joan. I mean, you were just sort of like working in a little cubicle. I was in Burbank in this NBC office, and after three months, I said, hey, there's a mountain outside the window. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it was very, very, like, isolated experience. For Carson, there would be top, the head writer was Raymond Siller. And there would be topics that we would get, um, like when, you know, the, the funny thing was, is people love Karnak, but Johnny hated doing Karnak. But we heard, again, everything I say about Johnny is only secondhand. I never heard him say anything directly, but we heard he said, oh, it's just an easy day for the writer. I don't like it. Uh, we wrote a Karnak where, the, again, it was a Saint Elsewhere, and it's what's the message on Mother Teresa's answering machine. Did a lot of Mother Teresa jokes in the 80s. <laughs> Fertile target. Um, and uh, th there was a story I can tell about being there. There was one magical word that always got a laugh, and that word was McNugget. And no matter what context it was in, the audience would like nearly like go crazy. So there was a skit where um, they were talking about uh, celebrities endorsing products. So we thought, oh, what if this is when Joan Rivers was on, uh, Joan Collins was on Dynasty. We said, what if Joan Collins has a product for McDonald's, Bitch McNuggets? So I pitched that to Mike, and he looks at me like, well, that really doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I said, just, it's got McNugget in it. Put it in. So the head writer came to us, and he looked at it, and he goes, I don't really understand this Bitch McNugget joke, but I'm going to give it to Johnny. So we saw Johnny on the stage with the audience looking at it like, this makes no sense. And he read it, and it got like a standing ovation. <laughs> and you can see him going, what? <laughs> Why did that happen? I have tapes of all the times that we wrote for him, but I'm sure they're blurred. Uh, there was one time he thanked the writers, which uh, we had done a bit, which was great. Um, what I, one thing I do remember is when he would do his anniversary show, um, he uh, would ask the writers to perform at the after show party. Uh, so we had to think of something to do, and I played piano a little bit. And uh, so we came out. And Mike had all these balloons taped to him, and he was smoking a cigar, and as I played, he popped the balloons, kind of a stripper thing, but he had a T-shirt and shorts, and then the T-shirt said, I heart Johnny. And so that went over well enough. And, and so then Johnny goes, you know, at the, at the mic, he goes, keep your day, you know, keep your day job, boys. And it's like, well, wait, you asked us to do it. And then our day job was working for him, and then we got let go three weeks later. So there were a lot of ironies. The only time I've ever been let go from a show. It was strange because our theory is, is they would cycle through writers. Pat McCormick was fired five times. They actually called us a month later and said, can you come back? Uh, like, you know, now Johnny's in a good mood or whatever. And we'd already gotten hired on another show. So uh, we couldn't go back. Um, so I really, yeah, it was all kind of mysterious. Well, Johnny probably correctly had a, had a very narrow frame of reference. He thought the audience could accept like the most obscure sort of politician you could make fun of would be Tip O'Neill. Um, the problem was there was a, a rhythm where, you know, you do things like about baseball players scratching themselves or, you know, rabbis performing circumcision. And that would be what would get laughs. So you'd start using them and he'd say, I'm sick of doing that. But if you didn't give him that, he'd go, what you're giving me is too weird. You're not getting it. So then you got to go back to the same Thing. So it was it was a little bit of a vicious circle. And there was a, a one thing that nobody I can figure like doing called the edge of wetness. And like I still I'm trying to determine why we ever did it because Johnny hated it. We hated it. Like, why did this thing keep coming out? <laughs>